Trial initiated. Jade Falcon Protocol. All systems nominal. Hello and welcome back to Let's Play MechWarrior 2 for the third Jade Falcon trial of position. External camera engaged. Today we're competing for the rank of Nova Colonel. As you can see, we're piloting a Kit Fox. Once again, we've uh, got an even lighter mech and we're going up against uh, even heavier enemy uh, opponents. In the first phase, we're going up against a 70 ton summoner. This is already a pretty hefty weight mismatch. So I'm going to have to use some interesting tactics to make sure I get the best of this guy. Now what's really critical about this third trial is preserving your mech as much as possible through the first phase and going into the second phase um, with as much ammunition and armor as you can. So I'm going to make use of my streak SRM's uh, ability to fire over uh, walls and around obstacles. Really I think it's uh, one of the only things you have going for you in this trial. <laughs> it really feels pretty unfair. The Kit Fox is probably the worst mech in the game. It's very light, so it's very light in the arm and armoured, and it doesn't even have um, the speed and maneuverability of the Fire Moth because, it, as we know, it has extremely limited torso twist ability. Generally, the tactic I like to use at the start here is, yeah, just to soften up this uh, summoner as much as I can. He's using uh, the alternate uh, configuration A, which is equipped with uh, an SRM-6 large pulse laser and a gorse rifle. Now the gorse rifle is a real threat here because if that hits you, it's pretty much going to take off a limb or take off um, all the armor on the location in one shot if it hits you anywhere. And that's really going to ruin your day. I pretty much just want to fire over this obstacle and keep him on the other side as much as I can and try and take out his left arm of the gorse rifle and the right arm which has the large pulse laser. Luckily the AI has trouble pathing around obstacles like this so long as you keep moving. He does have jump jets and occasionally they'll uh, try and pop up above this to get a shot on you. And if that happens, um, you can take a good chunk of damage and you, you might even die just in one single attack like that. So it pretty much just comes down to hoping that the AI doesn't decide to do that. Oh boy. Now this mission would be so much easier if the Kit Fox could actually torso twist effectively. It would let you use your superior agility as a light mech to your advantage. But as it does have such a limited ability, you just you just uh, can't dodge at all effectively. To shoot at the enemy mechs you have to be moving either directly towards or away from them which totally precludes the possibility of dodging any incoming we weapons fire. So it pretty much just ends up as a slugging match. And between a Kit Fox and pretty much any heavier mech, that's going to end very badly for the Kit Fox. I'm not doing too badly. I have taken a few uh, laser hits, but for the most part I'm in pretty good shape. Streak SRM is the only thing you really have going for you in this mission. Everything else is stacked against you. You can see I'm using the uh, weapon camera just to make sure that I'm hitting my target and not uh, getting blocked by any intervening terrain. Now the Streak SRMs and LRMs for that matter have a uh, really very good homing ability. If you've got a lock, uh, they're pretty much going to hit. You can turn very tight circles, so really you just have to make sure you're within range and you're not shooting directly into an obstacle. This uh, alternate config A for the summoner does have an SRM6, but I've never seen this guy actually use it. 
Alright, so what's going to happen when he's lost both of those weapons is he's going to try and run away, which will be my uh, cue to come in and finish him off. Oh, there's the pulse laser gone. I really need to take out that gorse rifle before I come after him, though. And there we go. Yep, he's turning and making a run for it. Not sure why, it's a closed arena and he doesn't really have anywhere to go. This first phase is pretty easy if you only are trying to get uh, one rank, but to get both you have to preserve yourself as much as possible and that really requires a lot more careful planning. I'm going to position myself for the best shot on the engagement sphere and wait until I'm completely cooled off. For some reason I'm having issues actually hitting this engagement sphere. Okay, that's the easy part done with. Now on to phase two. Sequence initiated. Shutdown sequence overridden. Trial phase two initiated. Yeah, we've got a warhawk to take on now. Just as the Kit Fox is, in my opinion, the worst mech in the game, the Warhawk is a pretty good contender for one of the best. This is an extremely severe mismatch in ability. That Warhawk will be able to destroy your mech very easily if you give him a clear shot. And he takes a second or two with all of his weapons to take you out. Now I am uh, down on streak SRM ammo so I'm just going to try and get as many free hits on this guy by using the same trick as I used on the summoner in the first phase. But that's definitely not going to last long enough for me to take out this Warhawk as I could take out the summoner. At some point, you're going to have to engage him directly. And going in toe to toe with the Warhawk is going to be pretty tough in any light mech, and especially tricky in a Kit Fox. Now, luckily, this isn't uh, a Warhawk Prime. He doesn't have all four uh, ER PPCs you'd expect to see in that configuration, which is some small mercy, I guess. Now, I don't know exactly what config he's using, but he seems to have a lot of laser weapons and he's got at least one Gorse rifle. Here go the last of the SRMs. They've served us well, but we're going to have to switch tactics now that they're out. So at this point in the fight, I like to take it into the uh, more densely populated uh, urban sort of environment you have in the middle of the arena. This really plays into the Kit Fox's one advantage I have left, which is speed. Yeah, that would be a gorse rifle. You can see it almost took out my limb in a single shot. Now the AC-5 is really my best bet at this point. As we know, the autocannons are really good at uh, dealing a lot of damage in a short amount of time. And that's exactly what you want in situations like this. Because the faster you can deal out damage, the less time I'm going to be spending exposed to the Warhawks guns. Now these buildings give pretty good cover, but they are destroyable, so you don't want to hide behind a, a single one for too long. If you're hiding behind it and the Warhawk is shooting at you, trying to hit you, hitting the building and ends up destroying it, you'll just be sitting out there in the open and you're probably going to die very fast. Now the tactic here is just to try to get this Warhawk to uh, 
try and path towards me around this building. And yeah, here we go. If I can get him trying to come around one way, I can quickly run around the other. And so long as he's standing directly next to the building, he'll have difficulty turning around to get a shot on me. What I don't want is him to back up like that. Don't want to take him on if he's doing that, because he'll just pound you really easily and you'll be dead. Oh boy. Yeah, this is exactly the sort of situation you don't want to get into. And I've lost my order cam without firing a single shot. This isn't going well. Fortunately, it looks like I've managed to trap him against the building as I wanted. You can see he's trying to turn towards me, but he keeps hitting the building, so he can't turn around to get a shot at me. And I've taken out that left arm just before he would have had a clear shot. Really, this is going not too badly. There we go, he's bashed his own arm off with collision damage uh, on the building. Now he is still dangerous, he does have laser weapons mounted in his uh, torso locations. Yeah, it looks like medium pulse lasers. And my armor isn't doing so hot, so I have to be careful here. You can try and go directly for a leg, but I think it's probably a better idea to try and take out those arms first, because that takes out most of his heavy weaponry. Okay, now I just want to try and stay behind him as much as I can and go for the legs. There we go. As always, once you've taken out a leg, the fight's pretty much over. This is a real nail batter. Everything's stacked against you. You really need to have both a solid idea of how you're going to approach this trail and to have a pretty good helping of luck just to have a chance at making it through both phases. Oh, that was a tough one, but with that, we've earned a promotion to the rank of Novica. Thanks for joining me again, everyone. I'll see you next video.